let's discuss about reduced graphene oxide first of all why we need to oxidize graphite to graphite oxide then graphite oxide to graphene oxide and then we get reduced graphene oxide let's get the idea from here we need graphene and we know graphene has a honeycomb structure uh, with the carbon atoms are arranged in hexagon shape we cannot get this graphene a single uh, carbon thick uh, atom layer from this graphite which is a bulk material because there are so many difficulties this is why we need to uh, follow this path we will take graphite first we will oxidize the graphite in this process is called exfoliation of graphite if it is chemically occur we call chemically exfoliation of graphite from graphite we get graphite oxide the similar way this is a graphite bulk material and if we take a thin layer of one carbon atom that we call graphene similarly once we get graphite oxide then we will use some oxidizing agents or with some other process then we will get graphene oxide in similar world this means that graphite oxide is a thick and graphene oxide is a thin from that graphene oxide we will get reduced graphene oxide this reduced graphene oxide have more or less same characteristics like a graphene but why we use this path because pure graphene in order to get pure graphene from graphite is very very difficult and for mass production it is very very difficult now why we look for graphene because graphene is a very interesting material it has a high specific surface area it has a large specific surface area and it has a, a, a excellent electrical conductivity and high charge mobility and they are chemically and environmental stables if you look here before i discuss about the graphene oxide the graphene oxide rule is basically here you can also say that this graphene oxide is basically a precursor for graphene when we when we reduce this uh, graphene oxide so we get reduced graphene oxide and that is also called you can call this as a pure graphene right so basically when we oxidize uh, graphite oxide and we get graphene oxide so there are three type of uh, uh, groups functional groups that is we call basically uh, this group we call carboxylic group here right and this carboxylic group is located at the edge each side of the uh, uh, graphene oxide and another one is basically hydroxyl group it is here and another third one is called the epoxy group and it is uh, making bond with the carbon here it is also located at the surface so hydroxyl and epoxy groups we call basal it, it is located at the basal plane and this carboxylic group uh, and also carbonyl groups these are located at the edge right now what is basically uh, reduced graphene oxide basically in graphene oxide the number of these functional groups or you can say the number of oxygen containing groups are large uh, while in reduced graphene oxide this number will be less look at this uh, slide here basically let's suppose we have a graphene here this is a graphene here you can also say explain it like this and once you oxidize this uh, we get this here graphene oxide here and these are the functional groups these are called the carboxylic group as i explained here right and it is located at the edge here and these are hydroxyl and epoxy groups these two groups are basically these two groups are basically located at the surface and these are called basal uh, basal surfaces and this carboxylic group is located at the uh, edges so now compare this with the RGO here so you can see here uh, there are very less number of uh, these groups available in uh, reduced graphene oxide this is why it is called reduced oxidize mean this mean graphene ox uh, oxide mean that we react with oxygen here 
and these oxygens come from different sources i will explain in the next video but in this simple video i just want to explain that why we go for reduced graphene oxide because this gra reduced graphene oxide has a similar property just like a graphene right if we go and search here uh, uh, about the uh, reduced graphene oxide you will see here this is a scopus here and let's write this reduced graphene oxide and search it you will see here uh, it, it, it has so many applications and uh, various field so you know you see here the scopus give me a large number of documents uh, by using the keywords reduced graphene oxide just let's go quickly to the ear wise that whether this field is growing or not so you can see here uh, this field is uh, growing uh, from uh, if you if you look we all here so you will see here that this field is uh, growing tremendously here <coughs> it's a new field basically here uh, you can see here this it start journey from 2010 here and a nine from nine it start you see th these are uh, showing very less number of uh, documents but it start from 2009 and you see the the, the the field is growing here you see here 15 13 now th this this field this field is growing right so this is how uh, it, it it had found its application in many fields uh, you look here uh, so many other places here like um, it using lithium ion batteries lithium sulfur batteries so uh, they have a lot of applications in various fields but this video is just uh, to shows that uh, why we use a reduced graphene oxide